Hello students, welcome to this course on modeling stochastic phenomena. In this course, we will be formulating various problems through mathematical equations. These equations could be differential equations, they could be difference equations and so on. Whenever possible, we will be trying to develop analytical solutions to these equations and for that we require several mathematical tools. Many of those tools we will develop as we go along this lecture and as, as and when the situation uh, requires it. In this present lecture, some of those mathematical tools uh, will be discussed. First tool that we will focus on is about factorial function. Specifically, the so called Stirling's approximation Stirling's approximation to n factorial. The factorial function occurs quite frequently in statistical physics and in stochastic modeling. It is also sometimes called a gamma function when n is not an integer or in general whether n is integer or non-integer a representation called gamma function is used. We know that this n factorial as we understand it, it increases as n increases. In some problems, it becomes necessary to know the functional form through which n factorial increases as n increases. Very often we say that our function increases exponentially, by that we often mean it is a very rapid increase. In fact, n factorial is a function which increases much faster than an exponential also and to see this behavior, it is necessary to specifically focus on how that function behaves for large values of n. Such approaches are called asymptotic approximations in mathematical sciences. So, we basically perform such an asymptotic approximation and that is called the Stirling's approximation. So, let us begin with the definition of a factorial when n is an integer. So, we know that n factorial is defined as n into n minus 1 up to n equal to 1. There is a, there is a functional representation in, for, in the form of an integral for this n factorial. For example, the functional representation is given as follows. It is an integral from 0 to infinity of x to the power n e to the power minus x dx. This representation for n n factorial can be further generalized even if n is not an integer and that is then called a gamma function. In general, when n is integer, one writes the gamma function as gamma n plus 1 equal to n factorial. <coughs> if n is not an integer, then one can write for example, gamma here nu let us say nu plus 1, then one, one there is no meaning in saying it as a nu factorial, but instead an integral representation of the type 
0 to infinity x to the power nu e to the power minus x dx. This is valid because the integral exists and will give you a definite value. However, this representation strictly is valid for all nu greater than minus 1. Strictly greater it should not include minus 1 then it is not valid. <coughs> now, let us revert back to the in integral representation as we gave in in the uh, uh, for n factorial. To see that we can just practice ourselves for let us say 2 factorial we know that 2 factorial is 2 it is 2 into 1 which is 2 which is according to the representation will be x square e to the power minus x dx. We can integrate this by parts and confirm that it is indeed true <coughs> because we now do a par integration by u d v method. So, we differentiate the first term x square which is 2 x. So, the first part is x square and you integrate this term which is minus e to the power minus x evaluated at 0 and infinity and the second one will be this integral and the differential of this because there is already a minus sign it will be plus here and the differential of x square will be twice will come and then it will be 0 to infinity x e to the power minus x dx. Here this term at x equal to 0 it is 0 and x equal to infinity it is 0 by virtue of the fact that e to the power minus infinity is 0. So, this will then be 0 plus twice 0 to infinity x e to the power minus x dx. You can actually further do the integration by parts and note that this integral is actually equal to 1. Thereby confirming the result that the integral representation is two, true for 2 at least that is therefore, integral 0 to infinity x square e to the power minus x dx is 2. In fact, the, the integral representation can be checked by integration by parts for any n. Thus, for example, the integration 0 to infinity x to the power n e to the power minus x dx if you do it by parts the first term is going to be x to the power n and the integration of e to the power minus x is minus e to the power minus x evaluated at 0 to infinity and like before there will be a plus term here and here it will be n then integral n x to the power n minus 1 is the derivative of x to the power n and e to the power minus x dx. If we had identified this as with the n factorial here it is going to be 0 here both the limits and this will be n and this will be basically n minus 1 factorial which is true because n factorial is n into n minus 1 factorial and by substituting different values of n we can show that it reproduces the fundamental definition of n which is true. And hence the integral representation is valid for integer n. for n integers. <coughs> now, let us first write down what is it that we want to prove. The Stirling approximation specifically says that Stirling's approximation
specifically says that for large n for large n that is n let us say much greater than unity the factorial function n factorial can be represented as n to the power n e to the power minus n square root of 2 pi n for all n much greater than unity. This is true even if n is not an integer. if we extend the definition of factorial via gamma function, extend the definition of n factorial via the gamma function representation. So, let us set out to prove this result. To prove this result, we write in the following form gamma n plus 1, which is how we defined n factorial. Of course, the definition is x to the power n e to the power minus x dx. We can write it in the following form x to the power n can be written as e to the power n log x. This quantity can be written as e to the power n log x then there is already e to the power minus x dx. This is not an approximation, this is an exact representation. We can <coughs> rewrite the same thing as gamma n plus 1 equal to 0 to infinity e to the power phi x dx, where phi x depends on n also, where phi x will be defined as n log x minus x. Let us look at this integ behavior of this integral when x approaches the lower limit 0, the behavior of the integral when x approaches 0 as x tends to 0 what happens to phi x? Phi x is n log x minus x. So, as x goes to 0, log x tends to minus infinity and hence phi x tends to minus infinity and e to the power minus infinity will be 0. Hence, phi x tends to minus infinity. Let us look at phi x first, it tends to minus infinity. At the other limit, as x tends to infinity, what happens to phi x? Now, ln of plus infinity is plus infinity minus of x, which also goes to infinity. So, it is basically difference of two infinities. Here we note that the logarithmic function diverges far more slowly as compared to a, an algebraic function like x. 
So x will always overtake log x, no matter what the value of n is, as x really goes to infinity. Hence, phi x again will tend to minus infinity as x tends to plus infinity. That means, at both the end points, the function phi x tends to minus infinity and we therefore, expect the function to have a form like this phi x if we plot it was tending to minus infinity at x tends to 0 and it was tending to plus infinity it was tending to minus infinity as x goes to infinity also. So, we expect phi x to have some peak in the middle. So, this is peak in phi x. So, let us therefore, estimate the peak value. The reason being that when phi x tends to minus infinity, the value of the integrand e to the power phi x, this quantity will be 0. So, the maximum contribution to the integral will come from the maximum value of phi x. So, we sort of focus on that value and perform the integration around that value that is the idea of an approximation. So, accordingly we find the peak. So, to find the peak of phi x to find the maximum in phi x. So, that is done by first of course, we find the extremum that is phi prime x equal to 0, which implies n 1 by x minus 1 will be 0 or the point of optimum is x equal to let us say x 0 equal to n. If you take the second derivative, of phi x, it will be phi double prime x, it will be minus of n by x square and at x equal to x naught, if you put the value x equal to x naught, we should put x equal to x naught and that is going to be minus n by x naught square, x naught square is n square. So, it will be minus of 1 by n. Since n is positive, the second derivative is negative. Hence, the second derivative being negative, implying that the point x naught is a maximum. point x equal to x naught is a maximum, not a minimum that is the idea. So, with this we now perform an expansion, a Taylor expansion around this point of the function phi x. So, that is the next step is perform Taylor expansion of phi x around x equal to x naught. The Taylor expansion is we can write that is phi x phi at x equal to x naught plus x minus x naught 
phi prime x naught plus x minus x naught whole square by 2 in phi double prime x naught and so on. We stop at the second derivative at the moment we are basically arguing that the contribution to the integral the dominant contribution to the integral will come from those values of the integrand which lie around x naught. So, to that extent an expansion up to x minus x naught square we deem sufficient for the present to, to obtain the leading contributions. Now, we see that in this expansion this term phi prime x naught is 0 because since phi prime x naught is 0 by the nature of it being a maximum point and we have already evaluated phi double prime at x naught is minus of 1 by n the expansion takes the form phi x will be phi x naught plus 0 the second term minus of x minus x naught whole square divided by 2 n. This is of course, higher order term x minus x naught cube of the order of x minus x naught cube which we tend to neglect. So, with this expansion we have a representation for gamma n plus 1 or n factorial for large n we can write it as 0 to infinity this is what we defined we will now this is by definition. So, it is true and it will now approach 0 to infinity e to the power phi x naught minus x minus x naught whole square by 2 n the x. We can take out e to the power phi x naught which is x naught is n. So, it will be e to the power phi n and this integral now will be e to the power minus of x minus n whole square by 2 n x from 0 to infinity d x. To evaluate the integral we do a transformation x minus n equals some new variable let us say u. Then our function becomes gamma n plus 1 equal to e to the power phi x naught which is phi n. Now, the limits of u if we go back we see that if x equal to 0 it will be minus n x equal to infinity it will be infinity. So, it will be minus n to infinity e to the power minus u square by 2 n and d x will be d u. As n tends to infinity the value of this integral will not be much affected if we set the lower limit as minus infinity. So, as n tends to infinity the lower limit may be set to infinity set to minus infinity since n tends to infinity. So, accordingly we will have equal to e to the power what is phi n 
x naught log x naught. So, it is n log of n minus n. And this integral will be now minus infinity to infinity e to the power minus u square by 2 n d u. This integral is the well known Gaussian integral. A Gaussian integral has a value, we can take it from literature. In fact, most generally it is written as if, if sigma square is used as the variance of the distribution or function, then this is sigma root 2 pi. In our case, sigma square is n. So, sigma is root n. So, it will become square root of 2 pi n since sigma square equal to n in our case. So, our integral takes the form this is gamma n plus n will be e to the power n log n e to the power n log n is n to the power n and this is e to the power minus n and the Gaussian integral is square root of 2 pi n. And by definition, we know that that is n factorial. Hence, we obtain the approximation n factorial equal to n to the power n e to the power minus n square root of 2 pi n as n tends to infinity. The Stirling approximation is also written in the form in the after taking log on both sides, it is often written as ln of n factorial is equal to n plus half log n minus n plus half ln 2 pi. You can also write like this, because when you take log, this is a, a square root of n will add n to the power half will add. So, it will n plus half ln. Actually, this approximation, although it is supposed to be valid for very large n, works fairly well even if n is say uh, within the first uh, uh, 10 values. For example, let us just uh, obtain the values n and exact value that is n factorial for integer cases and the Stirling approximation. If n is 1, this is 1 and Stirling's approximation will yield you 0 0.92214. There is an underestimate of 8 percent or so. If you put n equal to 2, exact value is 2 and we get 1.919 by using this formula n factorial representation by Stirling's approximation so on and so forth. By the time you reach 5, the exact value is 120 and this gives you nearly 18.02. So, if you look at error, it will be about 8 percent, it is about 7.8 percent or so 
and it will steadily decrease to 4.05 percent and by the time we reach 5 it comes to about 1.6 percent. So, the error beyond 5 is less than about 2 percent and it comes to about 1 percent or so by the time you reach n, uh, 10. So, this is sort of variable for most practical applications especially when we are looking at order of magnitude results. So, this is basically what Stirling's approximation is all about. I would like to close this by telling that there is a, a small addition to Stirling's approximation by further improving the integral method by improving the expansion around x equal to x naught and that leads to a corrected improved approximation beyond Stirling's approximation improved Stirling's approximation. We will not prove it, but just for completeness we will state that result which says that n factorial will be n to the power n e to the power minus n root 2 pi n and 1 plus 1 by 12 n. And this approximation in fact brings down the error to less than 0 0.01 percent by the time you reach n equal to 5. It is extremely accurate, it is quite accurate. given for n equal to 5 and beyond. So, here we first introduce to the concept of asymptotic approximations. This is quite useful for understanding the behavior of solutions in large n limits and we will encounter several occasions in probability theory, in random walk modeling where we are going to use this result. From now on we will go to other mathematical tools which will be used in this lecture. Thank you.